All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of What's in the Night Sky for March 2021. And I'm sure a lot of you are really excited about the return of the Milky Way core. Those of you in the Southern Hemisphere would have had a glimpse last month, but now pretty much most people will be able to catch the Milky Way core rising in the Southeast in the pre-dawn hours. But we also have the equinox this month, a day of equal light and equal dark all around the world. And it's around this time of year with the lengths of night change most rapidly. So for those of you in the Northern Hemisphere, make the most of the dark skies whilst you still can. But coming up this month, we have the Milky Way core returning to the night sky. It's also a good time of year to photograph the zodiacal light. We have Jupiter, Saturn and Mercury all together in the morning twilight. Leo the lion is now dominating the southern skies. And there's also the Gamma Normid meteor shower for those of you in the southern hemisphere. But before we deep dive into all of that, a quick message from the sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. There are thousands of inspiring classes covering a huge range of topics such as graphic design, photography, freelancing and more. I'm sure many of you watching this video will appreciate Ian Norman's class on Nightscapes, an introduction to all things landscape astrophotography. Or how about James Manning's Astronomy for Starscapes, which will help you make sense of the night sky and plan your astrophotographs with newfound knowledge. I've been using Skillshare for over two years now and making use of their courses on freelancing, running a business, but also Photoshop, logo design and animation classes that help me create the introduction clip to this series. So if you want to try Skillshare Premium for yourself and get access to all of those courses, the first 1000 people to click the link in the video description will get a completely free trial of Skillshare Premium for a limited time. Starting in the Northern Hemisphere where the nights are rapidly shortening now and it won't be long until we call an end to Northern Light season. But facing north in the evening skies, as darkness falls, you'll see Ursa Major, the big bear, climbing higher and higher into the sky, and Cassiopeia, along with a very faint region of the Milky Way, coming down to the northwestern horizon. And you'll also notice Andromeda getting very low on the north-northwestern horizon. So if you wanted to try some deep space astrophotography with a bit of a foreground alignment. It's a really good opportunity. But coming back to the evening skies and swinging to the west, you'll notice as darkness falls, Mars and Pleiades very close together in the night sky, high in the west in the constellation Taurus, so around Aldebaran and Hyades. And as the evening goes on, they sink down to the northwestern horizon and coming with them is Orion and the winter constellation so a really good opportunity here with the winter circle very low on the western horizon opening up some nice wide angle astrophotography possibilities. If we come to the south you'll now see Cancer and Leo the lion come into culmination, crossing the southern meridian. For those of you with star trackers and long telephoto lenses or telescopes, you may want to hone in on the Leo triplet. Three spiral galaxies huddled together in the night sky, not very far from Chertan in the constellation Leo. Swinging round to the east, and as we head into the morning hours, you'll see Hercules rising higher and higher into the east. You'll see the Cygnus region of the Milky Way almost parallel with the horizon, a nice bright area of the Milky Way. And then you'll also notice signs of Scorpius rising in the southeast. And with Scorpius comes the Milky Way core. So the Milky Way core now rising in the southeast in the pre-dawn hours. And it gets higher and higher until the sun eventually comes up. But it's also a good time of year to do a Milky Way arch panorama as it's nice and low, arching across the eastern horizon. 
Facing east just before sunrise, you'll notice Saturn, Mercury, and Jupiter. And as I skip forward in the days, Mercury reaches greatest eastern elongation on the 6th, where it will be 27 degrees away from the sun. And as the month goes on, Jupiter and Saturn become a bit easier to photograph as they rise earlier and earlier. On the 9th, they will be very close to a thin crescent moon, all straddling the ecliptic. And then on the 10th, the moon comes a little bit closer to the bunch, although you will need a very clear view of the eastern horizon to catch this gathering. On the 19th, you'll find a larger crescent moon right next to Mars in the night sky, and of course you've got Pleiades and Hyades there as well, which should shine through the moonlight. So really nice photographic opportunity there. As for the southern hemisphere, so facing south towards the circumpolar constellations as darkness falls, you'll see the large Magellanic cloud starting off very high, small Magellanic cloud just below, but they begin to sink lower and lower down to the southern horizon. And now Carina and the Carina Nebula, Crux constellation and the Colsac Nebula are all very high in the northern sky. So a really nice region for some wide angle star tracking. Facing west after darkness falls, you notice Mars and Pleiades very close together. Also Aldebaran and Hyades in Taurus. And as the night goes on, they sink down to the northwestern horizon. And along with them comes Orion, Gemini, and the winter constellation. So the winter circle now, nice and low on the northwestern horizon. It's a good opportunity to photograph it with a nice foreground. Facing north, and you'll notice Cancer and Leo, and the lion, crossing the northern meridian, reaching culmination. And for those of you with star trackers and long telephoto lenses, or perhaps a telescope, you may want to try and photograph the Leo triplet, three spiral galaxies huddled together in the night sky. And in the eastern skies, as we head into the pre-dawn hours, you'll see the Milky Way core rising from the southeast into the east, and it gets much higher in the sky for those in the southern hemisphere compared to those in the northern hemisphere. And it's also a good time to do a Milky Way arch panorama, the Milky Way stretching over the south southeast. Facing east in the morning skies, you'll find Saturn, Mercury, and Jupiter together. And as we fast forward the days, to the 6th. That's where Mercury reaches greatest eastern elongation, where it will be 27 degrees away from the Sun. After that, Mercury makes its way back towards the Sun, but Saturn and Jupiter rise earlier and earlier, making them a lot easier to photograph by the end of the month. On the 9th, Mercury, Jupiter and Saturn will be joined by a thin crescent moon, all sort of straddling the ecliptic. And then on the 10th, the moon will be a little bit closer to the three planets. You may also be able to catch the moon on the 11th, with just underneath Mercury, Jupiter, and Saturn. And then on the 19th, Mars is joined by a bigger crescent moon, along with Aldebaran, Hyades, and Pleiades, which should all shine through the moonlight, so a really nice photographic opportunity there. As for the special events this month, as we are close to the equinox, it's a really good time of year to see and photograph the zodiacal light. The zodiacal light is a triangular, diffuse glow of light that emanates from the horizon in the direction of the sun after sunset or before sunrise. It's caused by interplanetary dust, so dust in the plane of the planets, in between the planets, scattering the light of the sun back to Earth and illuminating the night sky, technically making it a natural form of light pollution. Now, because that dust is within the same plane as the planets, 
Zodiacal light is always found in the zodiac band of the night sky, straddling the ecliptic, the imaginary line that the sun, the planets, and the moon follow across the night sky. Now, the best time to see the zodiacal light is when the ecliptic is at a steep angle to the horizon, which for those of us in the northern hemisphere is after sunset at this time of year. So those of you in the northern hemisphere, after sunset, keep an eye in the direction of where the sun just set, and then when it gets to astronomical twilight, you should hopefully see a diffuse triangular glow emanating from the horizon. And it is a really faint glow, so you want to make sure that there's no light pollution in that direction, and it's also best seen when the moon is not in the sky. For those of you in the southern hemisphere, the ecliptic makes a steep angle against the horizon in the morning skies, so you guys should keep an eye out in the direction of sunrise before sunrise. And it's typically visible for like an hour or two before sunrise, after sunrise for the northern hemisphere guys. But for those of you at latitudes close to the equator, you can pretty much see the zodiacal light all year round. And for those of you more advanced astronomers and shooters, you might want to try and photograph something called the Gegenschein. Now the Gegenschein is part of the zodiacal light, but it's the point of sky that's directly opposite the sun, the anti-solar point. So if you are in pristine dark skies close to the equator, you can actually see the zodiacal light stretching all the way across the sky from horizon to horizon. And then at the point which is directly opposite the sun in the sky, there's a brighter bulge known as the Gegenschein. And that's because the dust there is backscattering the light to Earth, and it's a slightly brighter bulge in the zodiacal band. So you will need good conditions, some pristine dark skies, and you should notice a blob of light uh, in the anti-solar point. Well, I'll put a link in the video description down below for a bit more information about the Gegenschein and what constellation you can find it in at what time of year. But again, really dark skies and techniques like tracking and stacking will help you make it more visible in your photographs. For those of you in the Southern Hemisphere, there's also the Gamma Normid meteor shower this month, although it's a minor meteor shower. The rates are pretty low, so it's often difficult to tell the difference between one of the meteors from the meteor shower and just a sporadic meteor. And the peak this year falls during a gibbous moon, so moving conditions are not very favorable, so I won't go into much more detail. But the, the radium point is within the constellation Norma, which is why it's more of a southern hemisphere affair. But again, I'll put a link in the video description down below for more information about that. Now onto the hashtag Wittens. For those of you that are new here, every month I set a target subject to photograph and then people upload their images to social media using the hashtag Wittens and I pick my favourite three of the month to win a prize. Third place wins a copy of my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. Second place wins a What's in the Night Sky t-shirt. And first place wins a Photo View Photography Guidebook of their choice. Last month's challenge was the Winter Milky Way, basically any region of the Milky Way that isn't the galactic core. And I really enjoyed the entries this month, and I think a lot of you enjoyed focusing on areas of the Milky Way other than the core. So in third place was Jen Rogers, with this beautiful image from Mouth Mill Beach. I love the composition, the nice blue tones, giving that sort of cool sense of night. And then you have the Great Rift and the Cygnus region of the Milky Way diagonally crossing the sky. So very nicely done to Jen, you win a copy of my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. In second place was Jacob with this beautifully composed winter scene. I love the way the bridge sort of invites you into the shot and the reeds on the left add a real nice depth to the image. And the misty snowy landscape as well just adds to that sense of depth and the processing on the night sky is very natural and nicely done. The colours are very nicely balanced and it's an image that was obviously taken with a astro modified camera as you can see, the pink-red colour of hydrogen alpha emissions in the region. So, very nicely done to Jacob. You win a What's in the Night Sky t-shirt. 
And in first place this month, he was in third last month, but this month he's won it with this incredible panorama of the winter Milky Way. I love the colours in this image. There are so many colours, yet it just doesn't feel overly coloured and overly saturated. It's just a nice balance and mix of colours. Again, an image taken with an Astro modified camera, as you can see a lot of hydrogen alpha emissions there. And I love the overall soft and ethereal feel to the image. That mist in the distance just adds a lot. And he's placed himself in the foreground there to provide some foreground interest under the arch. It's a very nicely done thing. You in a photo view photography guidebook of your choice. This month, let's go for something that's not very popular, but hopefully you guys do me proud. And let's go for the zodiacal light. So those of you in the northern hemisphere face west northwest after sunset, and those of you in the southern hemisphere face east in the pre-dawn hours, and those of you close to the equator can try both. So thanks for tuning in to another episode of What's in the Night Sky, and if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies. <laughs>